Allah ka ka hi ka ka ko Like Bumpy, I have not attended one of these in many, many, many years. And so it's nice to see old friends and new friends and the new generation coming to these podium. I would like to, to thank the Office of Hawaiian Affairs for this opportunity. And what a pleasure it is to see a lot of old friends. I am Kamaki Kanahele, Chairman of the Sovereign Councils of the Hawaiian Homelands Assembly. At one time, the Shaw, S-C-H-H-A, stood for the State Council of the Hawaiian Homestead Associations. When Act 302 passed and the language read that we beneficiaries had the sovereign right to self-governance and self-determination, I immediately and adopted Antipegi Hao Ross's title of the one that she set many, many years earlier and called it the Sovereign Councils of the Hawaiian Homelands Assembly. And today that name stands, Antipegi, wherever your uhane is, mahalo nui loa for that blessing. I have stayed the course for all of my old sovereign warrior battling uh, ohana and stayed to protect the trust that has been granted to us and I've never left it. This year, Brother Bumpy, the Shah is 25 years old and we have been a stalwart people in which we train and discipline our people to actually practice what many have preached today and that's self-governance and self-determination on native trust lands. Today, the Shaw is uh, 30 associations strong. Those 30 boards count about 170 elected officers to each of those boards on all six islands, and including all, the Association of Hawaiian Homelands, uh, which is the waitlist people, all belong to the Shaw, an estimated membership living on the land and on the waiting list of about nearly 70 to 80,000. And we work with our people on a daily basis, and we make sure that we teach and actually practice the art of self-governance and self-determination. The Shah has six elected presidents from six islands. Those presidents become presidents by the associations on their respective islands who put them into their position. And after that, the Shah meets on a four, every four years and five delegates from all 30 associations come together. It is what is called an assembly, and we vote each of us up there who are presidents of each island. I also am the president of the Oahu Council. Uh, then wait to hear what the delegates want in leadership and their future leadership. And they elect the chairman, the vice chairman, the secretary treasurer, and two, deputy, uh, two directors and I have retained the chairmanship for three-fourths of those 25 years. We have grown, we have become very sophisticated in community self-governance, we have bylaws, we have rules and regulations, policies and directions that we constantly grow with and mature and redevelop and move toward in order to make us, give us better opportunities for better standards of living, education, science, technology, and everything that is needed for a better life for our people on the Hawaiian Homes Trust lands. It is important that we continue to persevere and to make a difference. For example, fast forward, um, we have in our associations decided to look for economic-based opportunities. My homestead, for example, has just completed finding the $200 million that we need to develop our project. We have committed ourselves to Hawaiian history when our association, for the first time in Hawaiian history, negotiated a deal with Longs, and not the Department of Hawaiian Homesteads, but us, to cut the deal with Longs that you will build on our lands, we will negotiate this one, and we will compete up against Walgreens and gang. It was the most exciting negotiating that we've ever done, and we Native people gave them the gas, and we won. And so, you know, all of those kinds of learning experiences, we will be, be in this uh, 18, uh, acre project of ours in Nanakuli. We are building a standalone health system being provided by the Waianae Coast Comprehensive Health Center to provide dental care for the children. Kamehameha Schools will be putting up the largest community health center on any Hawaiian homestead lands in the state, a $25 million building where the inside hall will be able to hold 18,000. Uh, it's going to be huge. 
plus our final project. And by the way, all of this, we found all of 100% of the funding for our final project will be a 48-unit low-income housing project. We expect to take all of these models to every single association and show them how to get into economic development opportunities, quit talking, put your money where your mouth is, and learn how to do it, and make your community grow and develop into the most sophisticated native communities that we have in this state, and we are including as many of our people as possible to get on the course. Our lead directive is to build our appeals and groom them and participate them in all of these business practices so they can begin to translate their own futures as to how they would like it. With all of you who have continued to labor on the federal and the state level, as well as the international level, this community leader so very, very, very much appreciates your ongoing uh, deliberations on all of our have, behalf and the great fight that you take. Mine remains at home on the lands of the Aina Ho'opulapula Ika Ho'oku Ono. And to actually be with our people on a daily basis and helping our kupunas and watching the next generation grow. It has been a very great experience, and we all look to you all to translate us nationally and internationally and become the nation that we are preparing our children and our community to move right into when you are ready for us. Allow me, as the community leader, to tell you that by the time you call this army together, your homesteaders, will be a very sophisticated group of people who reach out to make sure that in technology, in science, in the arts, in culture, economic development, and in the latest gifts of high technology, we are preparing our people now as we speak, as we have for the last 25 years. And it's been an adventure. As I close, I would like to remind all of my fellow activists of the last 30, 40 years that I'm still in the warring stage. <laughs> Uh, my, my, uh, you know, we, 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 it's been so exciting to build shopping centers and, and uh, commercial kitchens like Papakole and Anahola. And by the way, um, uh, Mike Dodd, uh, Hudson has signed a huge contract with all the hotels, and he can't even grow enough tomatoes. So he's teaching all the Hawaiians to grow tomatoes and selling thousands and thousands of dollars. And, and everybody on every island on our trust lands are looking into business opportunities everywhere and anywhere, both national and international. And then we have a new chairman. And by the way, this is my 10th chairman in Hawaiian homelands, 10. And this one says, Shobi Masagatani, Lok Kamaki, you need to make sure that the state decides what's best. And I went, oh, good grief, here we go again. And so the adventure of disagreeing was strong enough that the Shah took its position to not support her confirmation in the Senate this year. We are looking for self-governance and self-determination. We will no longer tolerate the state to dictate us and to tell us that we are continuing to be wards of this state. And with that, I have, uh, it's going to be exciting for me, Anel, because I understand that in your convention, uh, you will be uh, supporting Joby's confirmation while we will be opposing it. E more, gang. We continue to do it well. We continue to do it right. And may I close by saying, as long as we continue to not hurt or harm any of us and the sacred blood that we have, we will do well. Mahalo nui loa, and may I have the privilege of wishing all of you a very, very melikaliki maka, mekahau oli maka hikiho, on behalf of the beneficiaries of the Hawaiian Homelands Trust. Thank you.